Welcome to our fourth First Friday webinar. My name is Robin Stewart and I serve as the Assistant Director of Alumni Relations for Virginia Tech Engineering. I am at home alone today, so I'm going to remove my mask now. Um, and all of our speakers today are also practicing safe distancing in their individual offices and um, private conference rooms, so uh, they are also unmasked. On that note, we are sad that we haven't been able to meet with any of you in person this fall, but we are excited for the opportunity to connect with a broader Hokie audience through our virtual programming. For example, today we have Hokie engineers ranging from the class of 1963 to current students, both at the graduate and undergraduate levels. Um, and they're living in places all the way from California to Pennsylvania, um, and of course, plenty from Virginia and everywhere in between. Um, today's program is a little bit different format than our previous First Friday events. And while our featured guest is our uh, 2020 Graduate Student of the Year, Joseph Kozak, we thought it would be more engaging experience to have a faculty member from the Center for Power Electronic Systems interview Joe. Um, so I first met with Joe and chatted about this uh, program opportunity, and I was very excited to learn that an alumna, some of you may have met at past events in the D.C. area, is actually serving on his dissertation committee. Um, so we invited Christina to interview Joe today. Um, Christina DiMarino completed her Ph.D. Um, in electrical engineering in 2018, and she now serves as an assistant professor in the um, D.C., uh, greater D.C. area and oversees the Virginia Tech Center for Power Electronic Systems up in, in Northern Virginia. Um, her focus is set on growing the center's portfolio in the DC area and beyond, um, in addition to the power electronics field as a whole. Um, and Joe and Christina have quite the rapport, so you all are in for quite the lively conversation. I'm excited to hear how it all plays out. Um, so just a couple of housekeeping items before I turn the program over to Christina. We are monitoring the chat feature in YouTube, so we will leave time for Joe or even Christina to answer some of your questions following our planned conversation. So please feel free to submit those questions at any point during the conversation. We will add it to our list to answer um, once we finish our planned questions. And we also promise to wrap up by 1.30 so you all can get back to your regular Friday activities. So with that, I'll welcome Joe and Christina to join the video. And thank you both for joining us today. I'm excited to hear, so let's take it away. Yeah, thank you, Robin. Um, so a little bit of background. So um, as Robin mentioned, I'm Christina DiMarino. I'm a new assistant professor um, at Virginia Tech. I'm based in the um, Arlington uh, Virginia Tech Research Center. So I'm up in Nova along with all, a lot of you alumni as well. Um, and uh, I've been working in the Center for Power Electronic Systems for eight years. Um, so I started, I got my master's daunting, I know. <laughs> I see Joe's reaction, he's like, I hope that's not me. <laughs> um, so I got, I became a Hokie in 2012 um, when I got uh, started pursuing my master's and then stayed for my PhD. And now luckily I was fortunate enough to be able to stay um, to be an assistant professor. And I actually met Joe when I was wrapping up my PhD, or I thought I was. I still had a couple of years left. <laughs> um, so we've known each other for a while. So he was with me when I was you know, doing my preliminary exam and probably the worst person to possibly be around. Um, and so we've known each other <laughs> since then. I was also here when he was you know, considering Virginia Tech um, for his graduate studies. Um, and now he's getting ready to graduate, which is so exciting. Um, so with that, um, uh, so just now so you know kind of what Robin was hinting at with the lively conversation. <laughs> um, so Joe, <laughs> hello, I think you're muted. Yep, okay, I'm wonderful. here. I haven't left okay, yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so can you start by telling us a little bit about yourself, young Joe? Sure. Uh, oh, young Joe. Um, so <laughs> outside of West Philadelphia, Philadelphia. I was born and raised and on the playground I did spend most of my days. Um, although I was not very good at basketball, uh, but we did play a lot of sports uh, on our block growing up. It was a lot of fun. Uh, there was like 10, 10 adolescent males in, in our, our little uh, dead end street, which is uh, great to grow up on. Um, so, but yeah, I, I'm originally from Lower Marion, Pennsylvania. Uh, so 
people have heard of it, the part of the joke is that it's also the uh, same high school as Kobe Bryant. Um, so then I, I graduated high school and um, kind of from uh, what we could call it fate or the fact that I didn't get into a lot of colleges, undergraduate universities that I, I wanted to go to. Um, I ended up at the University of Pittsburgh uh, and I, ooh, I started there a while ago. So 2009, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I graduated high school and, and, and went to, to Pitt uh, where I was in the engineering physics program. So um, I've now only had become a real engineer as of the last like five years when I, when I got an electrical degree from there as well. Uh, but engineering physics is a mix of material science, electrical engineering, and physics, all wrapped up into a really fun uh, kind of bow um, of a program. Um, so it, it helped me learn a lot uh, going through that, um, learning the engineering process, the thought, uh, thought processes, the mentality. Um, and then through those experiences, uh, I kind of ended up here, which I'll, I'll touch on in, in a second. Um, but uh, yeah, it was uh, luckily those those experiences, not only uh, growing up, um, uh, being from a um, kind of multicultural family where where my my parents and my family is mostly from Ukraine and being in a um, growing up in here in the United States, being influenced by American culture. Uh, it's been really helpful here now. Um, so uh, uh, as I've started to, to learn Chinese with uh, a lot of my coworkers. Um, and so, uh, anyway, we're graduating from Pitt in 2014 with my bachelor's degree. Um, I had some experiences there, uh, that, that exposed me to, um, not only engineering, but also research, um, and then also power electronics. So I was able to co-op and work, uh, during my time because no one wants to hire an engineering physics major because no one knows what an engineering physics major does. Uh, so I, I got a, a job as a co-op, uh, intern. Uh, at GE Power Conversion, um, formerly Convert Team Naval Systems. So uh, by working there, I was exposed to some of the different fields and how uh, a lot of them kind of interact in terms of power electronics and, and looking at uh, systems for naval applications, uh, looking at solar applications. And I started getting uh, interested and excited by it. Um, and then going forward from there, uh, getting to uh, learn about uh, the design and, and research aspects and development of new technologies. So uh, it was really some great mentors there that, that helped me decide to continue on um, in terms of the, the power electronics realm and, and realize that I wanted a, 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 um, a higher, higher degree um, that there's, uh, if anything, I've learned by staying in school for 10, 12 years, uh, as you're well aware, Christina, that uh, um, you learn more about what you don't know than what you do know. So uh, um, the the people on here who are from other fields that I've I've luckily had opportunities to talk to and learn from, it's just like, oh boy, like I didn't know those kinds of trees existed. That, that's that's so <laughs> fascinating. Like right, uh, especially having major. That's that uh, you know you're on the right track though, right? The more you realize you don't know, the more you're actually learning. Right? Uh, that that yeah that that's very yeah. true. Let's look at it um, that way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, and, and I mean, that's uh, that's one of the fun parts about being, especially at, at Virginia Tech, and there's not too many distractions externally. So uh, you, you end up in conversations about what you're doing and what you're passionate and excited about. So um, that's been uh, really fun. Um, so wrapping up a, a little bit about like the past of kind of how I got here. Yeah, I was working as an intern for a year and a half. And then I had a a, a, a second internship uh, doing physics research, um, which was awesome. Um, I got to do that in, in Germany and uh, work for some very talented and, and exceptional engineers and physicists. And I realized that some of the work that they were doing, um, I wouldn't necessarily see in my lifetime maybe, uh, or the impact of it. So uh, coming back down to the, uh, or coming back to, to earth and in, in the electrical engineering world and, and talking with some of those mentors at, at work, I, I started my master's at Pitt um, in 2014 and then finished in 2016. So that was kind of my first uh, step at my own research in power electronics. So 
Uh, I worked with uh, uh, Dr. Stankina in, in the University of Pittsburgh, who is more of a device physicist, but uh, the power electronics group there needed some, had some collaborative efforts. So I was able to finally use my degree of learning something about semiconductors and then something about circuits and starting to mend them together. Uh, and luckily I've, I've had that opportunity here. Uh, and as you said, yeah, you're, you're, you were one of the first people I met here, um, which was exciting. And, and now you're probably my toughest committee member because uh, you know exactly what, what uh, can be accomplished by being here in the university and what resources that we possess. So it's, it's pretty exciting in that regard. Um, so then uh, after applying for PhD programs, uh, I, or after, after wrapping up my master's, I realized I wanted a larger group uh, to kind of um, get some more experiences and, and kind of leave Pittsburgh. By that point, I'd been there for seven years. So uh, you being here in CPES for, for eight years or at Virginia Tech eight years, you, you got the chance to move up to Arlington. And uh, that's a great kind of uh, a change of location can really um, do a lot for for your program um, uh, as I'm aware of. So uh, leaving leaving Pittsburgh, I decided to come here. I uh, had a couple um, different kind of uh, opportunities that presented themselves, but I realized that uh, here at, at Virginia Tech, there was a great amount of resources, great amount of support, a lot of people doing this type of work. Coming from a group of maybe 10 people to a group of like 100 people, it's a uh, so as you got to experience, as I, as I came to your bench always and, I, hey, Christina, how do I do this on the curve tracer? So it was, uh, I was presented with a unique opportunity to come here and, and study some of uh, research initiatives that I, I thought would be interesting and that I kind of, uh, I had. So um, I started here in 2016 in the fall and, and I've been here ever since and hoping to finish uh, we're slightly delayed on the finish date, but um, we'll we'll give that to this whole pandemic thing and and hopefully finish up uh, in the next couple months. So that that probably a longer winded answer to uh, a little <laughs> bit of background, but uh, so it it's been a, a fun point getting to to this uh, this time here, and and now I get to sit in the conference room and uh, talk talk to people about how cool Virginia Tech can be. Awesome, thank you. I think that painted a really nice picture. It kind of influenced, showed us your background and kind of the road you took to get here. And I think that's directly related to, you know, the stuff you've been doing at Virginia Tech. So thank you. Um, and just a little bit of background, you mentioned power electronics a few times. So for those that are not familiar with power electronics, don't worry, I wasn't either. <laughs> um, it, it's just electrical, it's conversion of electrical energy from one form to another. Right, so you can think of, I hate giving this example because it's usually something we hate, but you know, your laptop charger, your phone charger, those little blocks, which are getting smaller, by the way, because of power electronics, um, those are power converters, right? You're converting the electrical energy from the wall into something, into DC power that can then charge your battery, right? And so this is needed for almost everything that we use, not just the portable electronics, but also for electric vehicles, hybrid electric vehicles, um, you need this also for interfacing to renewable energy, so for wind, solar, um, so there are numerous applications for um, power electronics. Um, and that was actually what attracted me to it. So unlike Joe, I actually didn't know what power electronics was when I came to Virginia Tech. Um, I had gone to a small kind of liberal arts school for my undergraduate degree, and so I wanted to just, I was just attracted to Virginia Tech for its, you know, large, um, research um, institution, um, being a large research institution and its awesome resources. And then on the last day of my recruitment event, I found out, I met the director of CPES, or co-director at the time, and he was like, have you visited our lab? I was like, what lab? <laughs> and in hindsight, I realized that was very silly because he's nationally known and it's the National Academy of Engineering, um, but he, he showed me the lab. And like Joe said, the resources were just phenomenal. Um, Virginia Tech is just internationally known for power electronics and I felt so silly not knowing that but once I learned he showed me the lab and I was like wow this automatically could see this is just if you know power electronics you can go into just about any field you want. So um, Christina I have a, I have a question or so also just to share you you also have a a, um, uh, a non-traditional undergraduate engineering degree if I recall as well. Um, yes. So that it, it's funny how it 
this place attracts us. Um, but uh, I did have a question <laughs> yeah. for you to put you on the spot, which is, uh, so what was your first impression of Santa Claus? Oh, I mean, Dushan, um, <laughs> when, when you first met him on your visit? Um, I don't know. We just kind of connected instantly. Um, I just felt like he was really easy to talk to. You could tell he was passionate about power electronics. It was just contagious. I definitely caught whatever he had. had. <laughs> right. um, he like just, yeah, was very out there, confident, and was like, you need to come see the power electronics lab. We're going to finish your dinner. Let's go see the lab. And then he just knew what he was talking about. Um, but it still explain, you could tell in the way he was talking that he knew so much about power electronics, but he was able to simplify, he knows so much about it, but to a level that he's able to explain it to someone that has never heard about power electronics, which is exactly what I needed. Um, and not what I had heard from other faculty that I previously talked to. So and there now was you're that, a faculty yourself too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably not one of the easy ones to talk to, but yeah. I don't okay, know. I think, cool. I think you're doing a good job. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, so, yeah, that's a little bit, I guess, about how we got attracted to Virginia Tech. And again, I remember when you were visiting, just in that same kind of recruitment event that I was in, and they were like, okay, Christina, you have to talk to some of the prospective students. I was like, oh, okay. No, but I, I hope I shared with you kind of my enthusiasm for CPES and power electronics and Virginia Tech. Um, apparently it worked, and apparently I didn't scare you away with how much work it would be because you came. So, don't know what that says about you, but you're here. So, now that you're here, tell us a little bit about what you're doing here at Virginia Tech and your research. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll at least comment first on, on my visit. <laughs> um, it was, uh, I, I, to set it up, I drove five and a half, uh, or what should have been about a four and a half hour drive was like six hours. Uh, through like a blizzard. I took a, an exam, changed, got in my car and drove down here. Um, and then, so I was not in the best of moods. So I apologize for anyone who had bad in first impressions. Uh, but yeah, it was, it was pretty neat. And it could definitely tell um, uh, the, the passion that you and all the other students had. Everyone looked very sleep deprived, but that's understandable. Um, I'm sure that hopefully my, the bags under my eyes aren't too bad today. Uh, so um, whether that's watching election results or working on uh, these uh, electric drive simulations that I have going, uh, been uh, a few later evenings this week. Um, but yeah, coming here and it was very exciting to, to see all the diversity of what's been going on. Um, so I uh, coming here, I, I got to kind of start piggybacking on what a, a couple different areas of, of the, the realm was doing. So while you may say you don't like that example, I love that example of, of power electronics is everyone has a laptop and everyone has a phone charger right now. So everyone can see what's um, the progress of our, our field, uh, especially because um, no one knows about power electronics really otherwise. Uh, it's not like your sexy field where, okay, I'm gonna invent the next solar panel. Well, your solar panel is gonna be great, but if you can't connect it to the grid, through a power converter, what's the point? So uh, I think that we have one of the more important and impactful fields that uh, people don't necessarily all know about. Um, so within that field, if you wanna uh, to talk about what I do, I guess, is um, if you wanna look at the entire like generation, uh, your, your energy is generated, it's through the wires that everybody sees in your house, uh, or I'm sorry, in the communities that gets connected to your house, uh, usually through one of those transformers, which people are studying in power electronics, which is kind of exciting. So it gets into your house and then you want to use that. So you either have to plug something in that can directly work, or for instance, your laptop, you plug it in um, uh, the laptop charger, and then the laptop charger converts that energy uh, for your laptop battery. So um, in that, that process, there are certain components in, in these uh, power electronics converters. So you're, you're going all the way from, uh, from generation, we've gotten down to this application uh, and we get our specific converter. So going through a, a little bit more, you, you start going down, there are these tiny little uh, transistor switches. And, and a lot of people know the word transistor, the old transistor radio. Well, it's the same thing. Technology's just advanced a little bit. The, um, 
So uh, they're, they're pretty much, in my mind, they're electrical light switches. So you apply a little electrical signal and it turns on and you remove the electrical signal, it turns off. So if I go over there to the light switch and I do some mechanical work and I switch the light switch on, it turns on. If I turn it off, it turns off and you won't see light. So these transistors, if you turn them on, current can pass. And, and in a sense, you can put on an LED that way. Uh, and if you take it away, the current goes away. Um, and that's part of where this the transfer of, of energy comes from in power converters itself, um, which is pretty neat. So inside of those, those transistors themselves are these, uh, they're semiconductor materials. So I won't go too far down into that rabbit hole because then we're gonna start talking about atoms and electrons and things that I don't even understand, but I work with really smart people who do. Um, so I, what I, I do is I get to mix people who are doing stuff on like making new converters and people who are making new transistors and I get to blow all of them up. Um, so uh, I think you, you, you were saying even earlier, I'm, I'm one of the few people who, who are privileged enough that when something goes boom, it's uh, usually not a bad thing. Um, so to me, that's one of the, the more exciting kind of uh, areas that uh, I came here to Virginia Tech and I'm working with these two, between these two different fields of power electronics and, and uh, electron devices and the people making the, the transistors. So I work on, on specifically reliability. So how can we make sure that your um, laptop charger doesn't uh, decide that it wants to catch fire because it's too hot? How can we start pushing the envelope on these systems so that we can make them even smaller and make them more um, kind of uh, power dense and, and less of a burden, a physical burden in a sense. Uh, so how can we kind of push, push our technology to the, the point where it's really getting optimized um, without anything breaking? So um, I brought some examples because I'm a very visual person and um, I felt a little uh, laughed at when I suggested making slides, but it, it, everyone was very kind about it and, and said that if you want to make slides, Joe, you can. Uh, but we'll, we'll work on, on just um, uh, some visuals. So uh, here, uh, the, the current trend right now, a lot of things are everybody kind of knows silicon. Uh, and everybody's been working on the silicon technology for a while. Well, the newest technology is, is called, um, or the newest two of the newer technologies are built off of silicon carbide and gallium nitride. So I brought examples of both. So, and they're, they're relatively small. So it's kind of neat when these things go boom, I'll show you guys. So this, these are what you can buy off, off the internet. So um, unfortunately, I don't think they're on Amazon yet, but uh, just like everything else, you can, you can really see that I'm, I'm not the smallest person, but these are pretty tiny. And these, tr these transistors themselves, so in this, you can kind of see this little reflection in here. Uh, that is a silicon carbide, what's called MOSFET, but a silicon carbide uh, transistor. So this thing can carry uh, or block 1200 volts, um, which I don't recommend people trying to be near, uh, and also can conduct up to uh, a max of 20 amps peak. Um, for a small amount of time. So uh, both will kill you. Um, so uh, that's why we try to keep everything at a, a safe distance. Um, uh, yeah, as, as uh, you're- Dangerous you're looking, stuff, this power electronics. Is, yeah. you know, we're living oh, yeah. life on the edge. I should have, I, I have an old video of uh, short circuit testing either, uh, it, it was either with you or, or Amy or uh, Grace or someone that I, I definitely have. Um, when we were blowing things up. Uh, but as I was mentioning, we, we are trying to blow things up. So here you can see where that transistor was. There's now a nice gap. And here's the, whoop, where's the camera? There's the, there's the other part of it. So we, we try to apply enough energy through this device to really test its limits. Um, well, sometimes we, we add a little bit too much energy. Um, so uh, that's when that happens. And we, we do get a loud explosion and, and a, a bit of a flash. It's kind of neat, um, but more specific. So that, that's in general, I'd say the topic that I'm, I'm looking at is, can, we, can, we, can I be a support and understanding the reliability of these systems so that we can make systems smaller, more efficient um, and that they won't fail 
uh, and that's that's very important on on a lot of fields. Um, and then also, can we provide this information to the people designing these new types of transistors to say, well, as we're studying this, do you see this kind of trend happening? Uh, so can you fix that? Like, I don't know how to do that, but uh, can can you change uh, some of the doping levels or change some of the the widths of the the, the semiconductor design itself to ultimately make the the device itself more resilient to some of the um, the failure mechanisms. So uh, we do that in using, um, so taking then a step back, that that's our general stuff. What we do is we, we use this mess kind of of a system. So this is, this is what a prototype power converter can look like. Um, so you see all kinds of stuff. Here's like a nice inductor. You can tell it's hand wound. Um, you see the different little circuitry. So pretty much it looks like if you open up your computer, it looks like a motherboard. And once you start looking at the circuitry, it's a little bit different. Um, but we use that converter uh, and that system to, to stress our devices under these kind of more adverse conditions. And then we take those devices out. So the device normally kind of sits up in here. We remove the device, we go to our fancy curve tracer uh, over in a different part of the lab, and we monitor the, the system. So uh, while I'll, I will end up with a doctorate in, ele in electrical engineering, I'm kind of like a medical doctor for these semiconductor devices. Um, so looking at, at how healthy they are, what kinds of uh, conditions are there. Uh, once you kind of start getting a sick device, there is no solution to make it too much better, which is uh, unfortunate for, for power electronics engineers, but uh, we can at least diagnose uh, the problems with the, the, the device and, and what could cause problems within your system. So overall, I, I think that hopefully might answer. I, I don't know, Christina, if you think that's a, a generalized, uh, approach of what we're doing. So, so I get, I'm lucky enough to collaborate with a lot of people. I work under Dr. Yu Hao Zhang and Dr. Kai No. Um, they're both incredible professors here. Um, and then I also have you on my committee to teach me all about the packaging of these devices. So um, what's the difference between this TO247 package and this SOIC20 uh, gold wing package? So that's what um, get to learn more about in these instances. But uh, hopefully that explains. Uh, I I would con I wouldn't necessarily consider myself a traditional reliability engineer, but I would say my specialty or expertise, which I don't necessarily agree with, but would be on the reliability of these new uh, wide band gap um, transistors. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. Um, and thank you for the demonstrations. We all love a good show and tell, so appreciate that. Thank you very much. And it's really cool, right? So you're you're getting to work with, and I think you've also had you know, internships with those device manufacturers, and get to say, okay, this is what I found, and trying to you know push the limits of your device. And so these are kind of the areas in which it fails. And so you're providing information to them how they can make their devices more reliable. And at the same time, you know the gener the traditional electrical engineer will just say, okay, it's a 1200 volt part, so I can operate at maximum at 600 volts. Okay, it's a 20 amp part. Okay, I'm going to operate it at like four amps, right? There's a whole lot of margin because of this, you know, lack of really deep concrete understanding of the long-term effects. So this is very helpful then. And again, yeah, just helping us to, you know, reduce those margins so we can get the maximum benefit out of these devices. It's really cool. Well, at the end of the day, the packaging kind of becomes part of the problem anyway. So uh, everything comes down to a thermal issue. So if you can start building these great packages uh, for us, Christina, we'll be able to, to operate these devices uh, a little more aggressively. Working on it. Cool. All right. So I hope that during your time at Virginia Tech, you've gotten some time outside of the lab. So what other things, when you do get to get out of the lab, have you been kind of working on or experiencing at Virginia Tech? Uh, so, uh, well, I guess there are two kind of different aspects of that. And you, you touched a little bit on, on the one uh, a moment ago. I have been fortunate enough to have a couple internships um, where uh, through, uh, I came here as part of a fellowship program from the Department of Energy. Um, partnered with Virginia Tech. Uh, so I was 
uh, got a, an internship at the National Renewable Energies Laboratory, uh, NREL in Colorado. Uh, so they're actually, I think you're working with them now too, uh, continuing on Christina, right? Yeah. So they, yeah. They've, they've been collaborators with us for, for quite some time uh, or our, our lab and we were working with them to start some new kind of reliability tests and uh, I think you guys might've been using the same setup that I was using, which is kind of cool. Um, I think that's the best part of an engineer is you get to build something and then someone else also uses it uh, or as a scientist in general. Um, so yeah, I was, I was out in Colorado for one summer. That was a fantastic experience um, because as, as you said, the power electronics is kind of a transcends a lot of fields. So uh, a lot of people are starting to learn about power electronics because of the electric vehicle market. So I myself am starting to learn about electric vehicles for a, a project that we're working on, but renewable energies is critical. Uh, if you wanna put all these solar panels, if you wanna put all these wind turbines um, it, around uh, to, to help our, our energy security and our, our infrastructure overall, uh, you have to connect them to power converters. So I got an experience there uh, kind of looking at that approach um, and looking at the reliability of devices under those focuses in the, the renewable energy kind of uh, market. Um, and most recently, I guess it was two summers ago now, it almost seems like the summer was uh, uh, just a, a blink of the eye, uh, but I spent a summer here um, this past summer, but the, the summer prior, I was out in California at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, uh, which was really fun. Um, so that was uh, a little bit different um, than I was used to. There's, uh, they really care about reliability. So where I'm usually the second thought, they're like, okay, no, let's first uh, find out more about this. And uh, exactly what you were saying. And, and I think hopefully the work that we're doing can help provide better guidelines to make slightly more aggressive um, uh, designs and, and platforms so that we're really getting the most out of the technology that we have. Um, I'd say be bold into these uh, power, electron, electron, uh, power electronic designers. Um, however, once things start blowing up, please don't come to me. So I'm just gonna put that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, was, I, was, I got to be out in, in, in outside of Los Angeles, California. So Dr. No gave me some recommendations back from his days in Pasadena. Um, and uh, it was it was really great to kind of experience and uh, try to blow things up out there, um, which was neat. Uh, it started a small fire that was uh, kind of interesting and exciting. Uh, the group had never before had the fire department and hazmat called on them in one day. Um, so that was my claim to fame within my, my internship. Uh, but we did get some really cool science out of it, got to use a particle accelerator. Uh, part of one of the most kind of uh, personally fun experiences was uh, on days where there's a lot of frustration uh, work-wise to just take a break. You'd walk around and sometimes you may see deer even. So uh, you get to see the space deer uh, as they called them. Uh, but then also got to see them making the Mars rover. So that was really cool. And then you think about the frustrations you have and realize that those guys have way harder problems that they're trying to tackle. So it's been a, a lot of fun. Um, in this field and, and getting some of these experiences. So uh, that's at least kind of touching on, on some of that question that Christina on, on uh, outside of Virginia Tech, at least professionally, this, this, uh, this field is super exciting and, and really fun to work in um, with a lot of uh, exciting opportunities out there. Yeah, absolutely. And again, I think, you know, the Virginia Tech again is just known for power electronics. So there are so many wonderful opportunities. I think I had three or four internships and research exchanges all around the world, had you know internship in Japan, working for you know, a company that is making some of these semiconductors um, and doing research exchanges. The University of Nottingham, which also has a great power electronics program. Um, also, had, we had some of the same internship experiences as well. Um, yeah, so I think those are excellent opportunities. Um, and it's really nice to get outside of the lab um, and just see kind of what other people are working on and the challenges they're facing firsthand. Um, great. Yeah, I'm glad you got the opportunity to have those experiences. I found them to be very valuable. My, mine weren't as international as yours. Man, I didn't. I forgot about the <laughs> Nottingham and, and Japan as well. Yeah, but down at Wolf Speed, that was a fantastic learning experience, a lot of fun. Uh, I mean, for me, I've gotten to live all around the country 
between Raleigh, Colorado, and California, you've gotten to live all around the world. This is, uh, uh, if anybody's thinking about grad school, if you do it right, you can have a lot of fun. So, uh, this is we'll true. This is very true. I mentioned at the beginning the, uh, CPES, the present CPES director, Dushan Borovich. He had been to pretty much any country I can think of, he's been there. Um, and then he got so upset because I managed to get to Iceland before him <laughs> <laughs> for a meeting. <laughs> it's like, how did you? It's like you're learning too quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. There's just applications everywhere. It's really wonderful. I think we chose a really promising field, which is really exciting. Um, I agree. Cool. Um, and of course, great school. Um, uh, okay, so I think you had also mentioned that there were some like volunteering and outreach activities that you participated in, both at Virginia Tech and through those internships. Do you want to talk a little bit about those? Sure, yeah. So I guess that, that might have been how I convinced some people to give me some kind of award thing. Um, yeah, I, I, at, 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 at JPL last summer, that was one of the, the big things that we got to also do is, is kind of volunteer in the community. Um, and be able to touch on uh, giving back um, and helping excite other uh, gener or younger generations on, listen, you can, you can send technology to space. Like some of the stuff I have friends who worked on is, is halfway to Mars now. And, and if in February, it'll, it'll touch down. And it, to me, that's so exciting. Um, and uh, I've also had opportunities with you and with others here that we've been trying to, to do some sim similar things with um, the VT Peers program was one of them that I got to, to work with. Uh, so they, they're fantastic, um, run by Holly Lesko. Uh, and she was managing us uh, kind of being volunteers and teaching assistance to sixth, seventh and eighth graders. So um, I have a hard enough time remembering what it was like to be 20 sometimes. It's, it was even more difficult remembering what it's like to be 10 learning science. So as we're teaching the younger generation, it's, uh, it's tougher to be uh, a little more understanding sometimes. Uh, uh, as a younger faculty, remember the undergraduate students need some slack, uh, <laughs> but um, it, it no, was it pretty... <laughs> Uh, it was pretty fun um, getting to go at least once a month and, and put on some science experiments and, and teach these kids uh, the engineering process and stuff. And, and you and I have also collaborated on stuff with that uh, here at Virginia Tech. When uh, you started, you, you refounded or restarted the uh, Power Electronics Society at Virginia Tech. I think that, that's the right name, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, so um, by starting that, that up, uh, one of your initiatives was, can we, what can we do to provide opportunities to undergraduate students and then also the greater community? So we had kids from uh, the local elementary school come in. Uh, we were running experiments with them. Uh, Igor, one of our associates uh, or, or colleagues, he, he is fantastic about it. And he put all these fancy lights on these systems to show, show really visualize and demonstrate. Uh, the challenging part of electrical engineering is you, you don't see what's happening in this little transistor. So that's why we have a fancy machine that can tell us what's happening inside. But um, if you're able to visualize some of it, I'm a very visual learner. So it, I think it was, it's fantastic to be able to, to demonstrate, build with your hands, get the experience to do that. So uh, kudos to, to him and, and, and to you for bringing those programs back here. So we've also been able to really kind of build and develop that, uh, um, those initiatives and, and be able to kind of uh, uh, explore how to connect with the greater community and, and teach people more about um, what they're able to do at home and, and what they're able to kind of uh, investigate in. So that's been a passion of mine. And, and I have some younger cousins who are, uh, uh, getting to into the elementary school and middle school age, so I'm I'm excited. I already sent them their first circuit kit. Uh, I remember when when uh, I got mine, uh, and I got an optics kit. I remember that one pretty well. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it's part of the reason I'm here today, and uh, hopefully, we we'll, we have no idea who will be inspired by what. So to me, it's pretty cool, and um, I won't show anybody how to blow things up just yet. But they can make some cool things. So. <laughs> Controlled blow-ups, right? That's that's your work, right? Yeah, you should true, know true. when it, or 
<laughs> okay, now I'm going to blow it up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Cool. Yeah. Well, I think you had also touched on kind of some of the volunteering work in like you mentioned the Power Electronics Society and you know that's part of IEEE. Um, can you talk more about volunteering? I've personally found it to be a great way to expand my network. So the outreach activities are of course very rewarding and you know we're helping to create that pipeline of young engineers and um, students in STEM to Virginia Tech and power electronics as well and just exposing them to a number of opportunities. So that's in itself rewarding. But then also from a, um, a volunteering perspective, then it's also a great opportunity for you to you know, grow your power electronics community. Um, so you can, can you talk more about kind of that aspect? Sure, yeah. Um, so I would say that uh, you may be the gold standard for for these things. So what we we have to remain more realistic. But yeah, it was uh, through through kind of starting here at Virginia Tech, um, starting at the student branch chapter. I started with uh, the um, the IEEE, which is our the Electrical Engineering um, Professional Society, uh, through our Power Electronics sub sub society. Uh, through that uh, organization, started volunteering. Um, funny, uh, one of the parts I love most about this field is also it's very international and you get to work with some really incredible people from all over the place. Um, however, English is not everyone's first language. So there was some misunderstanding. So now I've been volunteered into certain other roles. Uh, I believe you and I are actually missing a meeting right now as a <laughs> from, uh, for, for this. Um, uh, so I think that uh, with uh, volunteering there, I've been able to kind of get to know and get to, to meet a lot of people externally uh, who have been able to kind of um, help impact me in terms of not only my, my research, but also what, what opportunities are out there next. Uh, so it, it's been a really kind of cool um, kind of uh, initiative and in, in working with the, the society that uh, I'm now organizing webinars for people all around the world. Uh, and I wouldn't have necessarily had that had it not been for uh, miscommunication and, and for just kind of being open to um, working and, and uh, volunteering my time um, because the, there's so much going on uh, for any, any field really. And so once you start learning more, it's, it's kind of, uh, it can be intimidating, but it's, it's very exciting at the same time. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's at least a little bit, of, I, we, you could probably talk for two hours and we'll have uh, that, that webinar another time of uh, your involvement in IEEE. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's one of those things that I always recommend to new students because it did so much for me and my career. Um, again, I, you at least knew what Power Electronics was coming in, which again, I'm so glad that, you know, that's becoming more of a thing and people are starting to hear about it more and more. Um, and kind of starting from zero, and only knowing, only having met Dushan Borovich at the time, I was like, okay, I need to grow my network. And CPES is wonderful. It has a lot of students. Um, and I was very fortunate that some of those students said, well, there's even a community outside of Virginia Tech in terms of power electronics. And that's when they started um, encouraging me to volunteer um, to the kind of international society. And that just really blew up my network. Um, I got to learn about all these different, you know, programs, research groups, uh, companies that I had never heard of that are doing amazing things in power electronics. Um, so that's kind of one of my number one um, recommendations for graduate students is, you know, take advantage of opportunities. See this as an experience, not just a means to an end, right? So taking advantage of your research, your internship opportunities, research exchanges, whatever you can, and working on your network. That is key, I think, because it can lead to so many new opportunities. Right, so speaking of new opportunities, I know that was a very smooth transition. Um, what's next, Joe? So I guess the first, the, my retort would be, when, when are you gonna let me graduate? Um, <laughs> but I, I wish I could say I'm taking my talents to South Beach and, and have a definitive answer, but I, I, I don't necessarily know right now. Um, I, there's a lot of really exciting work going on right here that I'd like to, to finish and, and focus on so that I can produce the best dissertation that I can. Um, but uh, soon enough, probably in the next month or two, I'll, I'll really be starting to, to look at what opportunities are out there. I know from my experience here and at Virginia Tech, 
um, and professionally overall. I, I've really enjoyed the research realm. I've enjoyed developing new technologies, uh, evaluating new technologies. So I think I would like to stay within in that aspect. Um, but I, I, I think, well, I'd also say that there's a couple aspects to your question too. But so professionally, I, I would like to, to remain kind of involved um, in the research, in the development kind of uh, phases, if that's at a national lab or at a, a research group within a company, I'm not necessarily sure. Um, but if there are viewers out there who are willing to, to uh, please come talk to me, we can talk afterwards uh, uh, <laughs> offline. Um, or reach out, please. And, and uh, I, I'm certainly not turning any opportunities away, but I, I'm trying to keep things as open as possible. So, and that also, I mean, that's a lot within, um, you're absolutely right. There's a huge alumni network um, from CPES. There's also a huge network through IEEE, uh, but it, it also comes down to what opportunities are open and available that I, I would be qualified for. So um, I'll be looking soon enough. So I don't have a, a complete answer for you just yet. Um, and then tying kind of on the second side, which is uh, we've alluded that, I mean, professionally and technically, there's a lot of really cool stuff, but I mean, that's only one aspect of what I do. Um, I would like to stay involved uh, within the community wherever I go, um, whether that be uh, kind of the, the Ukrainian community um, from my heritage. Uh, I would like to stay involved in the Virginia Tech community. Um, that's, uh, they've done so much for me. So I, I always, um, if someone's willing to bet on me and, and give me a little bit of support, um, then I, I would absolutely like to, to be able to give back in, in ways that I can. So uh, as, a, as a poor person right now, uh, I usually try to give my time, which even though that's a very little, uh, as we've joking, jokingly kind of said, uh, they don't let us out of the lab too much, um, but uh, we do get some breaks. Um, so uh, Dushan's been very nice and closed the lab for two days sometimes. So that's, that's been amazing. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, I'd like to stay involved, not only in the professional community in research, but also get involved within the communities that I'm passionate about. And if that, I'd like to continue some STEM outreach programs uh, where it's possible, uh, volunteering within the Ukrainian community, volunteering within the Virginia Tech community, because I mean, I've been here almost five, five full years. So it's, it's been a, an adventure and, and it's great to meet fellow Hokies. Um, I'll stay involved in the pit community as I can as well. So uh, to me, they've both offered so much um, that if I can give back, then now, now would be the opportunity to. Great, thank you so much. Um, so I think at this point, we can open it up to any questions from the audience. Any questions for Joe? While we're waiting, how about any unexpected experiences, maybe, that hmm. you've had while at Virginia Tech? So uh, I had to think about that, uh, or I, I I assumed that might be one of the, the questions that came up. So after thinking a little bit about what and reflecting uh, about my Virginia Tech experience, what's been kind of uh, special was, uh, well, two, one, one is, talked about getting to meet and getting to know so many different people. That's been um, something fantastic. But uh, one that's been really kind of uh, different was um, being able to travel around to different conferences. Uh, so you and I got to um, go to a conference in Germany, but I may or may not have gone through Australia to get there. So that was that was really <laughs> exciting. Uh, got to, to utilize oh, a, a, a work trip. <laughs> Um, to also be able to, the timing just worked out perfectly to be able to go to a wedding in Australia. So uh, got to go see some friends get married down there and then was able to um, kind of uh, uh, pack up. Uh, so pack, uh, luckily only needed one suit in that case, but then went to Germany. Um, but I did have to also add some ski gear because then uh, after we, we had some fun, um, you didn't join us, unfortunately, but uh, um, afterwards we went down to Switzerland to go skiing. So I am a horrible skier. I spend most of the time, uh, on my butt, but it was, uh, it was certainly a, a well worth experience. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, it's, 
amazing getting that opportunity to go to the conferences, not just to be able to meet people outside of your organization, but also, and to, of course, show off your awesome research, but also just to see new places. Yeah, that's been definitely a highlight for me. Can't wait to get back to that. <laughs> It looks like you have a question from Ray. I believe this was your old roommate. Uh, oh can you confirm that you'll be moving to Nova after graduation? <laughs> <laughs> he hears it's pretty awesome. Oh, okay. Well, uh, thank you for the question, Ray. Thank you for joining. Uh, cer certainly, uh, my Virginia Tech experience has been mostly revolved around all the great people or influenced by all the great people. So um, thank you for, uh, for, for your contributions. Um, I, I would say that Nova is an option. I would like to stay, if, if it's at all possible, I do love the East Coast. Um, uh, you, you yourself, Ray, are also from Philadelphia or the Philadelphia area. So if there's something out there, that'd be amazing. Uh, but uh, I don't, I, I can't necessarily say definitively where I'll be, but if there's a great opportunity, um, I will certainly not take it uh, or I will not turn it down. Um, so hopefully <laughs> if that's in, in Nova or somewhere, uh, close by, uh, we'll still have we'll still have some fun watching some uh, some Flyers hockey. So or uh, making fun of Manchester United football. <laughs> we have another question from Laura. She said, "Impressive experience. Do you see yourself as a professor in the future?" Um. So that is a, a very good Excellent question. question. Thank you very way. much. <laughs> uh, maybe we should have Christina talk about the life of a junior faculty member. Uh, is that being, your answer? <laughs> you don't want to be me. <laughs> uh, being being pretty candid, though, uh, I have to say uh, there are aspects of being a faculty that I love uh, or would love. Um, being able to be involved in so many different aspects of uh, research, um, being able to collaborate with people all around the world, to me that seems so exciting. Um, and that's what I would I would love to be able to do someday. Um, I have colleagues and and friends who are. Um, all across the United States uh, in different fields even that could be even related. So it'd be a lot of fun. Um, right now though, I don't necessarily see myself starting in, in academia uh, to become a professor. I think it would be a lot of fun maybe someday, but uh, for the, the next experience, I would like to be able to, to be doing a little, little bit more hands-on uh, to grow my technical skills further um, and also not, um, Worry, worry about 10 million things because I have to say, uh, give credit to Christina. There's also Dr. Dong Dong and Dr. Zhang who are the new faculty with our group. They've been amazing and I don't know how they find time to sleep based off of all they're doing. <laughs> so uh, it's really impressive um, uh, to see them kind of grow and, and be able to um, succeed whereas I have a very strong feeling and conviction that I would not, so. <laughs> I'm sure that's not true, but we have a question from Sung Jae. Sung Jae, we hope you're doing well. He's a CPES alumni, uh, alumnus. Uh, so his question is, how did you prevent yourself from burnout in grad school? That is an excellent question. The short answer is I didn't, um, but <laughs> uh, no. Um, I would I'm say sure you that you still had some fun activities to help make your get through this. Oh, I, and I, I would certainly say that that's uh, there's there's even though feeling a level of burnout, that's part of I, I would say that's part of the grad school experience, unfortunately, um, where you are kind of given an opportunity to put your entire soul into into a project and into your work. And that's not something you will get an opportunity to do in most most cases. So uh, going to work somewhere, it, it, you won't necessarily be able to, to really have that chance. Uh, I would say, um, actually, Sanjay, you were part of the help with this, uh, as were you, Christina, Ray, and, and others. It's, it's really the people around. I, I feel very excited to come to work a lot of times because I can hang out with cool people. So like uh, Chihau and I get to test later this afternoon, and I was working with another student or two other students earlier today. And to me, that's, that's a, a really fun uh, kind of way to, to keep a high level of excitement, but also um, kind of stay focused. Also being able to explore other passions has been really fun as well. So 
uh, whether that be staying in the ultimate Frisbee community on like Tuesdays and Thursdays and playing around or um, trying to make some of that a little bit of a priority. Uh, going to River Mill on Fridays, that was that was very fun for the time that we could uh, kind of have those experiences. So, um, but at the end of the day, it's always about the people. So luckily there's been so many great people to kind of help and be a support. Um, I'll give, the, there's too many people to kind of give a, a, a shout out to in a sense about maintaining a level of sanity, but really it's been um, because of because of them that I was able to uh, stay productive and, and stay involved in certain uh, a, a lot of different avenues. Excellent, yeah, I couldn't agree more. And knowing that they're all in this with you, right? Mm -hmm. You're not alone. Oh yeah, we're in the trenches. Uh, I, this, this is the <laughs> military equivalent of power electronics school here, I feel as though. So, um, not Sorry, to denote what, <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, sorry to interrupt. Um, no, I think, you know, that's a great way to wrap up and kind of show the power of the Hokie Nation and the um, Virginia Tech community and that, you know, it sounds like you kind of wouldn't be as successful and uh, balanced as you could, wouldn't, without, you know, your colleagues and classmates and all that. So um, that's wonderful. Well, I have one last question, um, Joe, and how is how, what are some ways that alumni can help support you and, and the work that is being done in the Center for Power of Electronics? Oh, okay. Um, interesting. So uh, I would say that at least the most direct impact to an individual student like myself, I've, I've had other alumni kind of act as, as mentors um, to myself, um, dedicating their time and dedicating their energy, um, I think is one of the um, most, I wouldn't say underappreciated, but underrecognized ways to kind of give back to the university. So um, there are still alumni that I'm in, in touch with and, and I've never been students with them here uh, or we'd never overlapped, but they, they are willing to um, kind of uh, share their wisdom and, and insights on, on my experience and, and give thoughts of that, that way. Um, there's certainly, uh, I, I know from my past experiences uh, working with like institutional advancement, uh, financial donations are always appreciated from any level of the university. Um, so uh, that's something I'll at least be considering once I make real money. Um, that may also be why I don't want to be a professor, at least to start out with. Uh, but it's, uh, I, I think that, that that's another, uh, another way. And another way that I've also found that um, I think keeps our network so strong is also hiring graduates um, from uh, Virginia Tech programs. So uh, for instance, uh, Sungjae, if, if you guys are needing some power electronics engineers, uh, let's talk a little bit after this. Um, sorry, Ray, it wouldn't, wouldn't be in Nova. Uh, but I, I think that that's also a, a huge way in terms of being able to support. Um, there, there's a lot, uh, at least in my experiences, there's a lot of ways to support a university and support the, the community without even having to donate any money. So that, to me, that's what I'm more interested in because it keeps you involved, keeps you um, kind of excited. Uh, and I like talking to people um, kind of obviously, hopefully it's uh, um, a bad problem I have, but uh, I think that there's there's a lot of ways to be able to support um, the the Hokie Nation, and I I think that uh, whatever anyone is able to do, whether it's connect with students, connect with graduate students, hire um, interns, hire uh, kind of full time um, staff members or full time employees uh, to donating their their time and money to the university. There's there's a lot of ways. So I'll be excited to at least stay involved. Um, and then someday I'll try to get the department named uh, something cool or something. Awesome. Well, you could just name it. It could be the Kozak department. Nah, I think if find, finding a fun name would be would be better. Name the, the lab or something. Yeah. Um, well, well, thank you both so, uh, so much for sharing um, your work today and um, I say every every one of these programs, I learned something new. So, um, you know, I think being in the Central College 
role, um, I learned a little bit about all of the departments and uh, it's pretty obvious that mining gets to blow things up. Um, but, you know, you guys get to blow up little teeny tiny things. So um, there's excitement in all areas of engineering. Um, and so I also really appreciate, you know, working for this university um, is how the motto about PROSUM is embraced so broadly. Um, and, you know, seeing these examples of how our faculty and students are able to inspire future engineers and leave a legacy of giving back to the world that we all live in um, is just really incredible. And so even in those, you know, few spare uh, free moments that you get as um, you know, faculty and, and researchers and graduate students. Um, it's incredible that you dedicate some of that time to giving back and, um, you know, learning about how uh, that's incorporated into your internship and, and work experiences is incredible as well. So um, thank you both so much for your time today. And um, we'll, we'll also be having a program next month on Friday, December 4th at 1230. Um, and We'll have a, a special treat with uh, Kevin Crofton, who is one of our aerospace alumni, and Dean Ross will be doing a kind of similar interview. Um, and so especially if you're interested in the world of semiconductors, that is the, the work that Kevin Crofton is in as well area. So I think we'll have a lot of overlap with some of that. So, um, you know, Joe mentioned that it's, it's a very broad field. And so Kevin has ended up in that arena from an aerospace degree with his original desire to become an astronaut. So, um, you know, there's a lot of overlap in all of our fields of engineering, but um, thank you both. And uh, I'm excited to follow Joe's journey and see where he does end up next, uh, hopefully after some well-deserved rest and relaxation after <laughs> this dissertation is complete. So. Um, I know that you are a Hokie that will continue to make us proud. So thank you all. Thank you very much for uh, the invitation. Thank you, Christina, for, uh, for having this fun conversation. And uh, I'm sure I'll see you uh, in the next few days for um, uh, in our next committee uh, meeting and everything. Thank you very much.